Okay. <laughs> I would like to call this meeting to order. Welcome to the March 6th, 2023 meeting of the Art and Public Places Committee. Um, recording secretary will take roll for us. Yes. Um, board member Azadarian? Present. Board member Faulkner? Here. Board member Kiefer? Here. Board member Nathanson is absent. Um, board member Puentes? Here. And board member Sayers is absent. Chair Bumgardner? Here. Let the record reflect that all board members are present with the exception of board member Nathanson and board member Sayers. Okay. I'll add here that the members of the public can participate in the meeting by attending an in-person from the mayor's conference room at the Santa Rosa City Hall, room 10, or via Zoom webinar by httpssrcity.org, zoom.zoom, or by calling in at 877-853-5257 and entering the webinar ID, which is 811-9350-6548. Public comment may be made live during the meeting via Zoom, phone, or in person from the mayor's conference room. The meeting will be live streamed on the YouTube of the City of Santa Rosa. Thank you. Okay, this is the time, um, speaking of public comment, when any person may address matters that are not listed on the agenda today, but are within the subject matter of this jurisdiction. The public may comment on agenda items when the item is called Each speaker is allowed three minutes. Do any members of the public wish to make statements on the art and public places? Not on the agenda right now. We'll be hearing on specific agenda items at the time that that item is called up. Uh, We do have one person in attendance. I'll give them instruction if they have a comment. Um, if If you're on Zoom and you wish to make a comment, you can do so by raising your hand and selecting the raised hand icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you're calling in, please press star nine and that'll raise your hand for you. All right, I think we're good to move forward. Okay, great. Um, Okay, the next thing would be the approval of the minutes. We have separate meetings to approve. Please consider whether you were in attendance before voting. We have October 3rd, October 13th, and November 7th. Copies have been distributed for your review. Are there any additions or corrections to these minutes? Um, Is there a motion to approve the minutes for October 3rd as submitted? Yes. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes as submitted for October 3rd, 22. Great, we have a second? Second. Okay, we now facilitate a vote to recording secretary. Board member Azadarian? Uh, So moved. Uh, Board member Faulkner? So moved. Uh, board member, I mean, sorry, I, I can't. Yeah. No, double, double so has to abstain. Right. Right. So you just, oh, I was not at that. Mm-hmm. I was not a member at that time. Perfect. Yes. Um, board member Kiefer. Yes, I. Uh, board member Puentes. Yes. Okay. Chair Baumgartner. Yes. Uh, so that passes with four eyes, one abstention, and two absences. Okay. Great. Let's now vote on October 13th. Would someone like to make a motion to approve those minutes? As submitted? Yes. I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the October 13th, 2022 special meeting um, minutes as submitted. I'm I'm not sure how we're going to even approve these minutes because there were only four members present and Melanie is no longer on the committee. She was one of those present. Um, Do you know what the procedures are for that? Yes, so we can still approve them Mm -hmm. um, just by majority vote based on who is there. Okay, well, there's, but there's not a majority of who is there. 
because um, okay, Jeff. Jeff isn't here. Jeff, we, no, so maybe we could table these until Jeff is present. He said he may be coming late. Okay, sure. let's table it. Okay. That's the 13th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let's move to the November 7th meeting. Do we have any special? Yeah, maybe we should just check to make sure we have those folks here. I think this is a situation where Kristen, Ann, and Lisa um would be a majority of the four that were present at that meeting so you're saying that if all four of them approved them they could be approved yes okay let's do it okay. okay so would someone like to make a motion that was at that meeting to approve the minutes for november 7th so moved do i have a second i second excellent um you can facilitate that vote too for us please now. uh board member asterian aye board member faulkner same uh, board member Kiefer? Aye. Board member Plenos? Aye. Chair Baumgartner? Aye. So that passes with four ayes, one abstention, and two absences. Okay, just for a note for the meeting minutes, it should only reflect um, four, uh, three ayes for the members who could vote on it. Member Azadarian was not present and should abstain. Okay. Sorry, there's so many little technical <laughs> things, but the minutes to be correct. So. Oh, got it. Okay. We will move on now to the scheduled items on our agenda. Uh, 5.1 is the cons Conservation Works Mural Project. Lead artist Alina Nubel and Conservation's Work Works Executive Director Una Heacock will present a proposal for the grant funded educational Kids Creek Care Mural Project to be installed on private property and creek property managed by the Creek Stewardship Program. The property owners have provided permission. Our recommended action is approval of this design and we will be getting a presentation. Yeah, I'll just say a brief introduction. Um, thank you to Alina and Una for attending today. Um, and just for our committee members, um, this is similar, this, this presentation and this type of project is similar to the last one. Uh, the last one that we received was I think by VJ, um, it was the mural on the fence near um, Dutch Floor Park. So it's a community based project. This one has a partnership with the Santa Rosa's uh, Creek Stewardship Program, um, but it's not a, a project funded by this committee or by public art funds. So the role of the committee in a case like this is to review the artwork design and give approval of it um, since it is on um, one of the locations is on city property and it's receiving city city funds through the partnership with the Creek Stewardship Program. So, so it's one of those kind of falls into that category rather than one of the projects that we commission. So I just wanted to give that intro and then I'll turn it over to Alina and Una to present whenever um, our secretaries have their presentation up. Apologies, we're getting it. There it is. Um, well, just to contextualize the project a little bit more while the screen is coming up. Um, over by Roseland Creek, right behind um, ramps, Roseland Accelerated Middle School, um, there is an area that is frequently used by Stephanie Lennox, who does education on behalf of the city to educate students about taking care of the creeks. Mm -hmm. And so this is the location that we have worked with the Roseland School District to install this art. The artwork design itself is somewhat in collaboration with the students. And so the design as presented here is um, something that the students respond to in class um, and inform some more of the elements that actually go into it. So the area right now that is words has transitioned into images of native wildlife that people can see when they visit the creek. Um, just go through the general overview of the construction of the project. Sorry, I'm late, everybody. I had an unexpected visitor. Uh, look back one slide. So to give you a sense of this particular structure, we'll have a design that wraps all the way around it. 
Um, so it takes a lot of the sort of elements of the hours to protect sign where it's indicating that the creek has valuable elements to it, natural elements to it, it's taking that and expanding on it a little bit. And it invites the public when they're walking down the trail to circle this. It's an area that oftentimes gets um, utilized. There are unhoused people who are passing through the area who sometimes try to access the, the water there. So sometimes the gate is open. So I think part of the hope for this project on the part of, I don't want to put words in their mouths, but I think part of the hope on the part of the district is that having art installed in this space will discourage graffiti, uh, which is oftentimes uh, applied to the outside of this particular structure. Next slide. So the style of the mural itself is quite flat, um, and that's both to help the students to actually paint it with us, as well as to make it easy to repair if indeed any damage is done to it later on. Um, the entire, the whole mural itself will be coated in um, vandal guard to make it easy to remove spray paint and things like that. But in the case that damage is actually achieved, it should be pretty easy to repair. Uh, next slide. Uh, these are the locations of things that we want to install in association with the mural itself. The mural you can see in yellow in the middle behind the rams. Um, the circle to the right of the yellow circle is where we would like to install a small piece of signage in Spanish and in English, inviting the community that's passing through there um, to look out for the mural. Um, appreciate the mural, see what's on the mural, and also appreciate the creek a little bit more. And that particular sign would be installed at both instances, both where one passes the Roseland District office fence from the Burbank side, as well as from the Stony Point side. Um, and we're using materials that'll hold up. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, did I include any other slides beyond this? Was that it? Oh, yeah, there we go. We do have approval from both the Rosen School District and the Creek Stewardship Program are both involved um, and are in approval of the program. And, and it's funded. <laughs> <laughs> That's the long and short of it. Fully funded. Fully funded. No requests for funding for it. Um, and I think that's well, temporary art for the students. That, yes, yeah, so we were. Part of this program that we're doing involves um, asking the students to consider forms of pollution that they have seen or may be engaged with, and then to create a sign to invite the public who's seeing their version of signs to also take an action to improve the quality of the creeks. Um, that's work that we're having the students do in class, and the plan is to laminate those and very temporarily towards the end of the year when the weather is dry, install those um, along the uh, district office fence as well for the public to see, but that would only be up for a few weeks at most. And that's our team that we were working with. Um, there was another uh, what that we got sent. It was eight pages. Yeah, that's their project description, and this is okay. It's a point. It just had more photos and it had photos of other things. Too, so I was just curious to know. Some of those other photos, you might be referring to the ones that are painted in a very different style, quite resolved of pollinators. And yeah. um, the idea for this particular mural came from something else that I did that was done in a different That was style. just, okay, okay. Just in the history of how we got to this particular project was on the basis of a different project that I worked on. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Any more that you want to say before we start questions? Nope, lay it on me. <laughs> this is a time for questions only, not discussion, and we'll get that after a motion. So if you have any questions from here in the committee, please bring them up. I have one. Is, is the work already um, made and ready to go, or is everything just planning only like we are in the process of actually making the art with the students at this point. We just Got had the very first meeting with the students where I brought the panels into okay. the classroom and started right. applying the designs to them. Okay, good. Yeah, it looks resolved. So I just wondered if you were starting this great. And I'm sorry I arrived late, but I just want to make sure I'm clear about what we are 
what our role is in terms of what this piece is since it's fully funded and it seems to have other approvals. Yeah, I, I provided that right before you came in. Yeah, so. I'm really sorry. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> um, so this is one of the type types of projects that the committee um, sees that falls under kind of like the umbrella of community projects where it's not a commission from our program. There's no public art funds associated with it, but it's um, this one is partially on city property and it's a, it's a partnership with our city's uh, Creek stewardship program in the water department. And for those two reasons, the committee is asked to approve the artwork design Got it. and give input yeah. on the design. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Could we go back to a slide with the actual design of the piece on it? Thank you. Mm -hmm. nice. The design itself, it's all right, I can go into a little bit more detail about what elements are actually in the design itself. This, as you can see, is a fairly early iteration of the design so that I had it on hand to provide to the council. It's still uh, more resolved than this the version that we've actually applied to the panel that we see today. What's being depicted in these panels are um, elements of the environment that might be seen or at one point in time could have been seen along Roseland Creek. Uh, the panels themselves are organized uh, seasonally. As you walk around, you see organisms that might be present at the creek uh, seasonally according to the phonology and behavior of those organisms. Uh, and then the, sixth, the, the first and sixth panels themselves sort of bookend it in the form of these are the growing seasons and these are the dying seasons. Or the, these are the seasons of regeneration and quiet on the front and the back. So what we're seeing here with the word revive is organisms like the different kinds of fungus that are present there in the creek that you might actually see. I've had a wonderful time going through um, observations on iNaturalist to see what people are actually seeing and identifying in the creek so that those can be depicted in the mural. Um, so do you have the artwork for all, all sides available to look at? Or are you still On one of the other slides. It's on one of the other slides, okay. And the through element of the blue wave that passes through everything ties the mural itself to the concepts that we're introducing to the students in the classes of connection to water and how water connects everything in the environment. And did you say that the sections that had words depicted on the pictures here that those were changing or were those words staying in the final design? Uh, the Good. words have been jettisoned in favor of more organisms at a larger scale that people can see as they approach the mural. Great. Nice. Great. Um, I think now we would ask for public comment on this item and then move to the committee discussion. Are there any public comments on Zoom? Um, sorry, give us a second sure. here. Um, yeah, there aren't any hands raised in Zoom. Just a reminder, if you wish to make a public comment, you can do so by selecting the raise your hand icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you're calling in, please press star nine. Yes, Chair Bumgarner, there are no hands raised at this Thank time. you, thanks. Okay, well, thanks for um, the presentation. Um, now we're going to move on to a committee discussion. And in order to start that, we need a motion. Does anyone wish to make a recommendation to approve the artwork design? And then we can start discussing. That's not a final vote. It's just to get it going. Yeah, 
I'll go ahead and sure. I will um, make a motion to approve the artwork as as presented. Great. Do I have a second? Second. Thanks. Now that we have a motion, we can discuss. Um, feel free to start if you'd like. Anyone? I just want to say that I really appreciate the work and all of the dedications and to actually have the children that live in the area um, participate within this art. Um, I'm familiar with this creek only from when I was a kid, I did play in it, but there was cars and lots of other junk in the creek at that time. <laughs> we used to jump on the cars. And um, so to see it, what it looks like now and what, how you're getting the community to participate within that area and to appreciate and how generations from um, now until generations, generations on um, is going to benefit from that. I definitely think this is a, just a wonderful and a great um, project. Thank you. I would say that I enjoy that the, the different panels do depict different seasons in the in this area. I think that's really wise or a, a design to show that there are different seasons of growth and celebration for what the creek should look like or can look like in, in a given year. Um, so I appreciate that the design was considering how the creek looks seasonally. Um, I think that's a great way to educate um, the, the youth in, in our young schools um, to be appreciative of what things look like at different times of year. And um, so I, I, I think that's a strong part of the design and like that there is that tying the, the water, tying the whole elements together. Um, again, I think that's a very strong design. So um, I, I'm looking forward to seeing more artworks that do provide a, an educational component of what it means to have a healthy creek environment. So I'm, I'm very glad to see this on our agenda today. I'm just really glad to see a proposal that it is fully formulated. It looks like it's really rooted in the community and it's fully funded. So I'm all for it. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think your time with the kids sounds really um, organic and evolving, and I like that. I like your sense of learning and adapting to what you're finding and what seems to be coming through. So it sounds it seemed particularly relevant because I don't actually live in the neighborhood that the yeah. people who will experience the art should be a part of formulating it. Absolutely. I like that. Um, and is plant identification part of the educational component of the project? Oh, I the wish we could. We will have a little bit of that. Our fourth meeting with the students, we're actually taking them to the creek. Mm -hmm. And indeed, this very area will be installed. And, and there's always plants out. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll put a little plant ID. We won't be able to help ourselves. It isn't a central component of the education mm -hmm. that we're doing, but only for lack of time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, Great question. Conservation Works has been working with students for years and years to bring them to do creek stewardship. And uh, last year we had a, a youth action group um, after school program where they did go in the creek and ID and you learn how to use iNaturalist. And, and it's a, this is an iteration of, of our overall work that we've been doing in our youth for years. Nice. I would also hope that some, I think the work is the design element is strong and it'd be fun to see it come find its way out into the community at times or in if it could be translated into PDFs that people could use is, you know, just to cause, to advertise that it's there and people to be finding, you know, to see it. I know that's a lot for you, but I just hope <laughs> someone picks something like that. Some people don't, do, don't travel to it. Any other comments? Session? We do have a motion on the table. It's to approve the artwork. Um, if there's no further discussion, I would like to call a vote. Board member Azdarian? Aye. Board member Faulkner? Aye. Board member Kiefer? Aye. Board member Nathanson? Aye. Board member Puentes? Aye. Chair Baumgartner? Aye. So this passes with seven ayes, sorry, on six ayes and one absence. Great, excellent. Looking forward to it. Yes. <laughs>
thank you very much. Thank you very much for hearing us out. Yeah. Okay, our next item will be 5.2, the election of the vice chair. Per county, per council policy 00042, public art, the vice chair shall be elected by the APPC members on an annual basis. Uh, so the recommended action here is to have an election in, of a vice chair. So, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So at this point, we will take nominations. This is an app. Melanie was, oh, is that why? No yes. Um, obviously, we've had some changes on the committee. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Melanie is gone. <laughs> I, I noticed. Yeah. yeah. When did that happen? Oh, did you not hear that? Oh, I've sent emails. Check your emails. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, I'm, I'm aware of that. I'm just. <laughs> yeah. So um, Melanie was haven't. appointed to the design review board by the council member who appointed her. So she has switched boards. Deborah Faulkner is our new member appointed by Victoria Hello. Fleming to replace that seat. Um, and so that created a vacancy for the chair, uh, vice chair position. Also a change um, which does happen uh, as new mayors come to power um, is that they may appoint someone else as chair. So uh, Anne is now appointed a chair by Mayor Natalie Rogers. Um, we're very grateful for Kristen's yes. time as chair, leading us through the COVID years of the committee. Yes. <laughs> um, so that those are the kind of new changes going on. So the reason why we have the vice chair election on the agenda today is because we currently, the committee does not have a vice chair because of Melanie's okay. uh, absence. So yeah, anyone can nominate anyone and anyone can nominate themselves. And the vice chair is... The vice chair is a backup and support to the chair, okay. fills in to chair meetings if the chair cannot be present for the meeting mm -hmm. um, and can help the chair with other duties such as attending events, attending the mayor's um, monthly meetings and other types of duties. Okay, so there's the facts. Um, are there any nominations for vice chair? I would like to nominate myself for vice chair. Would anyone like to second that? I'll second it. Okay. Any other nominations? <laughs> this is a little weird. Yeah, it's, a little weird. it's always awkward. Don't say this. It's always it. Yeah, which is great. I'm not hearing any of the nominations. Does that mean we? Um, that means we can just vote. We can just vote on it. Yeah. Um, she doesn't have to do like a campaign speech. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think we actually have to take public comment. Oh, sorry. And that. committee yes, members yeah. can discuss before the, the vote is recorded if there's any right. desire to discuss. Questioner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Any public comment? Um, uh, we actually have no members of the public in attendance. All right. All right. So no public comment. The comment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any um, conversation questions? Well, you were you were a great chair, so I'm sure you'll be a yeah. great yeah. vice chair. You might be demoted. I mean, <laughs> I see this as a shift. Life is often a cha cha. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> But a very supportive. Um, yeah, yeah. Totally. I, I really enjoy being part of this committee and our conversations and want to keep um, staying in a leadership role. So I would very much look forward to uh, rejoining the vice chair position. So. Excellent. Great. I, love it. I like the attitude. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> we had coffee last week and talked about this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's vote. Okay. Uh, board member Azadarian? Aye. Board member Faulkner? Aye. Board member Kiefer? Aye. <laughs> board member Nathanson? Aye. Board member Puentes? Aye. Chair Bumgarner? Yes. Um, so that passes with six ayes and one absent, um, Bob Say with Bob Sayers being absent. Mm -hmm. Yay. Congratulations. Okay. Congratulations. 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 Congratulations.
Okay. Um, thank you, everyone. That was so smooth. Appreciate <laughs> the little awkwardness. Uh, okay. So our next item is program and project updates. Is that right? I was thinking there was yeah. some. Okay, yeah. good. For some reason, I thought there were two things. Well, we do have to go back to the meeting minutes. Um, oh, yes. But we can do that whenever. We, we can whenever. do it now. You want to do it now? Sure. Let's do that. Can okay. we take that vote that we missed on the minutes when um, Jeff sure. arrived? Jeff, um, what did you do for a quorum? Oh. And just for the record, can we state which minutes those were? Yes, it was the middle October one. October 13th, um, 2022. Yeah. Um, okay. A special meeting. Um, so, board member Azadarian? Abstain. Absent? I, I was absent at that uh, meeting, so I abstained from the board. Perfect. Um, board member Faulkner? Abstain. Uh, board member Kiefer? Aye. Uh, board member Nathanson? Aye. Board member Puentes? Aye. Chair Baumgartner? Aye. You have to abstain. Oh, I wasn't there? Mm -mm. <laughs> I didn't catch it the first time. Excuse me. Abstain. Okay. Um, so that passes with um, don't get so excited. three ayes and three abstentions mm -hmm. and one absence. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So back to where we were then. We are at 5.3 program and project updates. And the staff will present updates on current projects. This is information only. And Tara and Jessica, take it away. <laughs> All right. I'll do the project and program updates. Um, I'll start with Unum. You guys all know, but it was a big success. Um, our dedication ceremony was well attended. And we've, Tara and I have gotten a lot of good feedback from the community. Um, and Santa Rosa has officially accessioned Unum into our collection. Great. And I have some swag to hand out if you want to take yeah. some around. And just, if you want to hand out the stickers to anyone, you're welcome to. Oh, yeah. These were from the event. Um, Art Surround is um, it's moving along. Six of our seven contracts were completed last month. So, um, and five of those artists have received their first disbursement to get going on their projects. Um, we don't have any firm installation event dates yet. But as soon as we have any official dates, I'll be sending them to you all. Great. For our ongoing rotating exhibits at the Finley Center and the Person Senior Wing, um, we've got a really nice one up at the Finley Center right now. It's up through April. It's the National Arts Program. And that's all Santa Rosa residents. It's 170 pieces or something like that. Um, so it's a community show. and. Uh, where I would invite and encourage you all to and come to the uh, reception, um, which is on Sunday, March 12th from three to five. Um, Nathan, member Asadarian, was one of our jurors this year for the awards. Oh, that's really good. Yay. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At what time it marched on March? 12th? It's March 12th, three to five. Okay. Yeah. It's um, it's a real treat from three to four. We have art viewing and music and everything. And um, then at four, we do the awards ceremony and the mayor comes and helps hand out the awards. It's really great. Um, at the Person Senior Wing, the Santa Rosa Historical Society is supposed to install for the month of March. And then in April, we're gonna be hosting Becoming Independent. And we're making that an annual thing to host them every year at the Person Senior Wing. Um, we've got live at Juilliard. We've started working on that. That's our concert series. <laughs> so we're working on it now for this summer. Um, we still have maybe one week to go with our applications and we have over 170 applications for six wow. spots. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. Yeah. Is that the most that we've ever had? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I imagine there's some really good yeah, really yeah. yeah, applicants. Yeah. I think the highest it's been was a little over 100 or 120, something yeah. like that. So yeah. I think this five by far, by fast. Yeah. It's a huge surge. Last year, we, we came back after COVID and it, it was not nearly as many as these. So yeah. I think Is it's the potential to expand it to another, you know, parks venue. No. Oh. Extremely tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it fits a lot of people yeah. in there, and it's just yeah. yeah. I, I think it's that, really central. Yeah, I think yeah, people I love it in that park. I think that we've heard last year 
uh, community member made their wishes to extend it longer, mm -hmm. very clear. And it's really a matter of funding. It's, it's actually funded by general fund fund. It's not funded by the public art fund. So the council for years has set aside money every year to fund this event. Um, to get it extended, we would need to either supplement the budget with public art funds, which is possible, or ask the council for more funding um, in order to make it a longer series. And then also considering the additional, you know, um, impact uh, on staff time for doing a longer series, I think, yeah. would be the main considerations. And it's already underfunded. Mm -hmm. So oh. it would, <laughs> we're, we struggle with funding for the stage every year. So it's it's already precarious. Yeah. And just to be clear, there's how many applications for six spots? 170. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we have criteria that we use to select our lineup. So some of the applications that we get are clearly yeah. ineligible and get screened yeah. out. And I don't know the percentage of that, yeah. but I would guess between 10 and 20 percent right off the bat are ineligible because they're not from the bay area yeah. mm -hmm. or they're a cover band or they're a cover band and those are our two really hard line criteria yeah okay um i'd be happy to report back about how much how many applications are of that nature i just have a question about how is who selects the finalists for the performers yeah so we have it's staff, <laughs> basically. Yeah, we have uh, Jessica, myself, and our other contract worker, Bryce, um, who help us with the program. Mm -hmm. The three of us have a role in that. And if we get down to tiebreakers or need additional input, we have other, other staff we go to, but we don't form a selection panel with um, community members mm -hmm. for this project. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and Bryce, for anybody who doesn't know, is... He, is a music producer and, right, yeah. and runs yeah. a venue and so thank you for adding that yeah he's yeah. got a lot of experience yeah. he runs he he runs uh booking for the lost church for somo village and um has assisted with the railroad square music festival as well yeah wonderful yeah if it's any consolation last year i juried an exhibition um down in pacifica that they could only select uh we, we could only have 50 artists selected and we had over 1,200 entries. Mm, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I had to look at that many pictures. <laughs> yeah. I think <laughs> in nuts. our case, this is unusual. I think this is like a surge after COVID and it's going to settle back down is yeah. what I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you identify any other outliers about this time around? Like, do you think there was like, mm -hmm. a different social media presence regarding calling for applications? Um, That's a good question. I think we did pretty much everything the same that we did last yeah. year yeah. so far. Yeah. I don't know of any major changes. I think it's just maybe more awareness based on last year. Mm -hmm. Other people found out about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe we were less clear about the criteria. This year? Maybe. No, I think we were more clear this okay. year. <laughs> 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 Maybe that got me full excited. I don't know. <laughs> well, I imagine this is good research for Bryce also as he's putting together, mm -hmm. you know, schedules for his other venues. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he he, per, he likes seeing the the mm -hmm. things that come in because this is an open application, whereas yeah. most of his other things are invitational and right, right. you know different type of selection process. Mm -hmm. So it's great for us to see who's out there. Yeah. I mean, because there's a lot of other opportunities we hope that there are for these people, and we mm -hmm. hope we can connect them to different opportunities if it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you make this decision, too, do you not, like, for, do you get re-entry, like, people who have played before mm -hmm. want to come back and play, and how do you deal with that? Yeah, if someone has played in the last three years, they're not considered. Okay, got it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and. We haven't had that many repeats, actually, because we want to give the opportunity to new people. Mm -hmm. Well, there's yeah. just so many. There's so many, yeah. We have an area very, very rich with musical yeah. groups here in Sonoma yeah. County in particular, and then in the Bay Area as well. Yeah. Do you do, like, I'm just curious, do you do, like, different types of music? Like, do you, mm -hmm. like, this? Is it important yeah. to have a, right. since I'm kind of new to the, I've only yeah. done it once. Yeah, that's part of our whole selection process is getting different that. kinds of yeah. music. Yeah. 
cool. Yeah, for each summer series. Yeah. yeah, and we really try to have the music, have the lineup each year um, be as diverse as possible to represent the diversity of our community as well. So we don't want just one type of music yeah. represented. And then um, we also really try to encourage, uh, well, like like she said, no cover band. So original music, things that are family friendly, that are danceable. Usually we don't go with like a, a solo or even a du um, mm -hmm. um, duet because it's too low key for the environment. People come to this event to dance. <laughs> I love it. There's a lady who brings a piece of linoleum oh, <laughs> on the grass every year. I love it. I love it. She's always there. I mean, she doesn't show up. I'll be just heartbroken. Like, <laughs> that makes the event. <laughs> Last summer when we came back from COVID, Tara's like, she's here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's good. Well, we'll keep you informed as we move along with it. Okay. Oh, and another oh, yeah. question too. When you say the Bay Area, that um, the definition of that is the nine counties that have some land connection to the Bay? Well, that's a good question. I think that we are general in that. I mean, okay. like Sacramento is out. Okay, yes. right. I think like even I don't know if we would consider folks from San Jose, even though that technically is mm, the Bay Area, Bay. Silicon Valley. You know it what I mean? It connects to the yeah. Bay. So um, <laughs> yes, okay. I, I don't I, I don't know if we have actually drawn boundaries in our minds. Did, when you when you yeah, did it last year, did you that. have something that you used for that where the line is? <laughs> Yeah, I think to me, it just meant we also accepted applications from like Oakland and San Francisco. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, I guess we would consider San Jose too. You would? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I mean, most, I would say most of what we get is Sonoma County. Yeah. And then San Francisco, Oakland, Alameda, Berkeley, mm -hmm. Richmond. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like, that, that, yeah. I, that's what I remember seeing. Yeah. Mendocino? Oh yeah, there are there are a few. There yeah. are a few from Mendocino County. Yeah. All right. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> furthering money. <laughs> All right. Um, next up, we've got our citywide art audit. Um, that's been on the back burner for a little bit, but we are in the process of hiring an intern right now through a citywide internship program, which was funded um, through PG&E settlement funds. So we've already offered the position um, to Meryl Wenger. She's a student at SSU right now, and she accepted. Um, she's going to be helping with the art audit. So our next step is for staff and um, our intern Meryl to work with the city's GIS team to edit and streamline our online mapping form. So we met with all of you and gave us input. And the next step for us is to process the, all that input with the GIS team. Nice. And lastly, I wanna update you on our facade improvement program. Um, the small business support program is launched. The website is up. Um, applications for phase one have been coming in already. And we have contracts with Art Start and the Mural Project, so two nonprofits. Um, both of the nonprofits are already being proactive. They're connecting with businesses, and um, they're, they're mostly connecting with businesses that they think are good candidates for the art component, for the, for the free art work mm -hmm. paid for by the city. And that was Art Start and which other one? Art Start and the Mural Project. Oh, the Mural Project. Yeah, okay. which is MJ and Josh. Yes. Yeah. Um, just yeah. point of clarification: Is it do, do you, does one need nonprofit status to apply for those? Well, that's we're done. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. No, the um, the contracts with the nonprofit were th those two nonprofits were selected because they have experience managing public art projects and implementing public art murals. Essentially, mm -hmm. um, we're not seeking any additional nonprofits to provide those services, mm -hmm. but who's eligible to apply for this facade improvement program in general are any small businesses with 500 or less employees mm -hmm. that were impacted by COVID. They have to be for phase one, which we're currently in right now, accepting applications for phase one, the businesses have to be located in the Roseland commercial corridor on Sebastopol road. 
um, and the Santa Rosa Avenue and Petaluma Hill Road commercial corridors all the way from Highway 12 down to Bellevue, essentially. And then um, the kind of greater downtown area, including Railroad Square. Those are the areas that are uh, phase one. Um, and I can share just briefly that there's essentially two components of the project. One is a facade improvement grant that a business can apply for to do actual facade improvements where they will be reimbursed up to the amount of the award that we're able to give them for costs associated with doing those physical improvements to the exterior of their building. And then the other part of the program, and, and that can include parklet construction as well. And then the other part of the program, which the public art program is involved with, is essentially pairing a business. A business can apply to have a mural or other public art installed as a part of their improvements mm -hmm. or as a standalone improvement. And so the public art program has the contracts with the nonprofit that then we will pair with those businesses so that the business can receive a mural or other type of public art on their facade uh, at no cost to them that's paid for by the city. And this is an, um, a program that's funded by a portion of the ARPA funds, the America Pl uh, Rescue Plan Act funds that the city received. So business could theoretically do both or just either one. Hmm. Yeah. It's good. Checking out the website. Yeah. Tara, when you, sorry, when uh, it was stated that criteria for a small business, I understand the 500 employees, but uh, affected by COVID, mm -hmm. is that kind of a monetary monetary um, effectiveness or how does that yeah, kind of there's, get? Um, uh, the criteria, criteria that the business has to self attest to is a list of about six or seven items that they have to say they meet that okay. definition. Um, they don't have to show financials or submit anything that, that financially shows of the impact. They have to self attest that they meet the definition. Okay. Okay, well, I'll move on to my project updates. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Jessica. Yes, yes. Sure. Um, for conservation and maintenance, we have had many items in the collection treated since um, our last regular meeting. It's been a while. So, um, and most were, are, have been in the graffiti abatement category. So, Wholesome uh, by Bobaki Mod up at the intersection of Mendocino and like Hillsburg Avenue, that triangle there um, across from uh, the dirty, uh, the dirty bird, the bird, I think it's called not the bird, sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, it keeps getting tagged. It was cleaned in November to remove tagging and it was just tagged again this week or at the end of last week. So it'll be cleaned again. And the conservators are recommending a more in-depth treatment to get rid of some of the ghosting of the tags that they can't quite get um, from their uh, basic cleanup. So. And then the Sonoma County mural in Jeju Way. Um, so Jeju Way has the two murals, one on each side. The one on um, the east side is by Art Start and it was recently cleaned um, and repaired after it was tagged. And then the Guardian of the Creek, which is the fish sculpture across the way over here in Prince Gateway Park, it was cleaned and stabilized this month. It has a lot of moving movement um, that causes cracking to the grout and tile loss. Um, it's a mosaic tile sculpture, and it, it's one of those challenges we have right now that we're just stabilizing it, but to actually keep it from falling apart, ultimately, it would need to be completely disassembled, mm -hmm. and um, the interior armature is not, was made out of rebar and is rusting and causing too much um, movement, mm -hmm. so it, it's going to be a challenge to figure out exactly what we do to that piece when the conservators have a full estimate of what kind of work it would need to preserve it, we'll have to probably discuss that as a standalone item separate from our regular maintenance program because it'll be such a large mm -hmm. item. That's I mean, Ma Mario Uribe's yeah, piece, right? Yeah. yeah. For our information, when was that piece installed? That was installed, I believe in 2011 when Prince Gateway Park was opened, I will have to double check that date, but that's what immediately comes to mind, but I'm not 100% sure on that. <laughs> um, 
So, um, so yeah, that's that that's kind of the bigger question mark. And then uh, the bronzes here at City Hall, Daphne, and then the one across the street at Luther Burbank Home and Gardens, they were recently cleaned. Daphne often gets little tags with Sharpie on her, so um, but those are cleaned up. For uh, the Asawa panels, which are kind of a part of our conservation, conservation and maintenance, although totally separate program, um, the engineering that our uh, foundry and um, our uh, art engineers have completed is done for the panels themselves. Um, but they're still working on doing a complete digital scan of all of the original panels and then making adjustments and calculations to know what the finished bronze cast size will be because br a bronze cast is going to be slightly smaller than the mold that's generated from the original panels because they have to provide those exact dimensions to the uh, engineer and contractor who will be building the fountain because they're separate projects and separate entities. So it's been very slow going to get that, that finished, but that's what they're still working on. And as soon as that is done, our, our piece of, of the kind of planning will be completed. Then the foundry will continue doing what they need to do to cast the panels and the engineer and uh, contractors for the fountain can begin their process. So that's kind of where we're at with that. Um, I think it's really exciting to share um, that what, what we've been doing for our artists in the general plan update project um, is, is moving along really, really nicely. And there's some great um, projects planned. So to remind you, um, we hired Nico Kimzen, Kimzen Creative and his team to do arts engagements as community engagement for the general plan update, specifically targeting youth from equity priority areas and populations in Santa Rosa. So um, they have formulated three different engagements that will be starting very soon. The first one, the artist is a graphic artist, Blanca Molina, who will be creating a 10 to 15 page bilingual coloring book for grades three through eight on the topics of health and environmental justice. These will be distributed to local schools and arts organizations within San Rosa's equity priority areas. The second engagement will be um, a lead, the lead artist is Kayata. Um, she's an amazing hip hop and spoken word artist um, and paired with a videographer and producer. Um, videographer is Jimmy Delara and the uh, associate artist, uh, sorry, associate producer is Fernanda Alvarez, who's a uh, San Rosa JC student. And the engagement will be the facilitation of three one and a half hour spoken word workshops for Santa Rosa JC students focusing on health and housing. The data collected from these engagements will be created into curated into a, a into three to five original songs and a music video that reflects and up, uplifts the hopes and dreams of SRJC students. And then the last one is lead artist Erica Lutz. Um, she's seeking currently a partner artist. So if anyone has any ideas, um, let me know. Um, but what her idea is, is to facilitate three one and a half hour workshops for Santa Rosa High School students focusing on health and environmental justice. And the project she wants to do is essentially a, a life-size in-person game. She's actually a game producer and has experience doing game production as well, or game design as well as installation art. So she wants to combine those two and have the students create um, an installation that reflects the hopes and dreams of local high school, school students, but through an interactive game in life, in real life that you play. <laughs> um, so those are, those are the three engagements that are planned for this spring. And then the data collected from all of these engagements, I mean, there's an experience obviously that the participants will have. There's um, kind of pro uh, products that are created through the engagements, but there's also a lot of data that's generated. So the data is what will be fed back into the general plan update in terms of um, who, who participated, what they said, what they thought was important in these areas of housing, environmental justice, um, health, um, and, and then that will really be a key part of the outreach that the general plan update needs to do specifically with this population. So those are all of the project updates that we have. Nice. <laughs> We've he, been really busy. Feel that, um, does Nico like supervise these? Is he like hands-on with um, Nico is amazing at collecting 
um, collaborators mm -hmm. and inviting artists to participate. And then has um, we met with him and his um, project manager that he's hiring, Nadine, who will be essentially managing each each project. But okay. but the, but so I mean, hands on in terms of here's your here's your scope of work. Here's what we want you to do, and now go figure out what you want to do and come back and and ask questions when you need it. That's great. kind of how how it looks like they're working. That's, okay, that's great. Okay. Um, any questions from the committee on anything that didn't get spoken about these two reports? That sounds great. You've been busy. Oh, I have a quick question. I know the PD gave a estimated time, I think the fall or something for us, um, the fountain, the Sawa fountain. Is that still the case? Unfortunately, that came out of nowhere. It's not based <laughs> on reality. Okay, that's what I wanted Very to much. <laughs> Okay. What what I what I believe was was conveyed to that reporter was that it is everyone's intention that this this makes prog progress this year, mm -hmm. and that um, fountain construction can start sometime this year. Okay. But there was no specific date of fall, and there was no promise of any completion of anything. Unfortunately, there's just it's too much of a moving target still. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> so, that's just some good clarification mm -hmm. on that. <laughs> I had a good question. Mm -hmm. Just because there's, it seems like there's a lot of murals going up and, you know, maybe kind of more projects than that and around the bend. I'm just curious if the maintenance and conservation costs, you know, that attend to those projects are a fixed percentage of our budget or is that something that we should anticipate is going to expand that's a really yeah that's a really good question um yes yes and no yes our project our conservation maintenance costs are are going to go up mm -hmm. but not necessarily for that reason all of the murals that we've just mentioned that are a part of facade improvements do not become a part of the city's collection and we do not have to maintain them okay they're essentially considered temporary installations that are the property owner's responsibility to maintain after we help get them there so unfortunately that means some of them won't last forever mm -hmm. um but that's we can't i mean that would what there's, we're anticipating 20 to 50 mural there's no way we could take responsibility right. for those unfortunately right. um but every year a new item is added to our collection like unum like the fifth street parking garage mural those are items in our collection that are new right so those do have to be added to our annual maintenance plan we don't necessarily do a percentage, but we try to work with our conservator each year to assess what our needs are in that given year. And in the last three years, our current contract with them is was a three-year contract. It will expire in Ju June 2024. And um, it was a $50,000 per year contract for three years. So when we're getting ready to renew that, we will be doing a full assessment and figuring out if that's still adequate or if we need to change that. Anything else? Great. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, the next one, number six, the committee member reports. Uh, Tara and I were talking about this last week. Um, this is where we're invited to make any comments or announcements about things going on. And we, in Zoom, it was sort of a little bit of an echo chamber because just didn't have that sort of vibe of conversing. Um, but I would love to see this be something that we anticipate and kind of like take notes and, and come ready to share. Like, because I love hearing what you're all doing and we don't always get it out on email. So um, if you have anything now, um, are there any comments or announcements of arts events, things you want to highlight, museum stuff, all this stuff. So. This is what we do. Yeah, I'll go. I mean, sure. if we're going to go ahead and give the um, committee report to the, the task force report. Is not that, yet. Not yet. No, that's no, not until. Right. That's next. Yeah. Oh, that's us. So just like you about town, what you're oh, like okay. in your realm, what you're noticing, anticipating. Yeah. yeah. I went to kind of a fun opening at the uh, Gospel Flats. Uh, Gospel Flat 
uh, farm, but they have an exhibition space or sort of a project space there in Bolinas. Mm -hmm. And uh, they do music stuff too. Uh, it was a nice space and kind of a, I think like a nice model of a kind of hybridized or an, or an intersectional kind of relationship between agriculture and um, kind of wild crafting stuff in the arts. It's cool. Was there a painter or something? I think, I feel like I saw it. Like a paper thing. Yeah, I, I saw it after. I was like, what is that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Glad you brought that up. Yeah. And that's in Bolinas, like close to the old downtown uh -huh. area? It really? Yeah. Okay. It's on the wind. And it's open to the public just at certain times? And well, there's a farm stand there. there. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's always open. Oh, okay. And they leave the exhibition open most of the time, too. Oh, okay. It's wonderful. Cool. I love that. Yeah. Hmm. Excellent. So, um, our museum, Museum of Sonoma County, has a pretty tremendous exhibition on view right now. Um, uh, Michael Cooper, he's Sebastopol based, but his work is really um, world class. He's probably the finest uh, and most innovative craftsman I've ever seen. I mean, it's just absolutely mind boggling how good his work is. So, um, if you like custom cars, yeah. He's got uh, mm -hmm. he's got these hot hot rods and weird crazy vehicles, but also um, just really imaginative, uh, unusual um, sculpture, uh, mixed media. Um, we're running a very robust uh, education program uh, through the, the museum um, this spring. So. Um, I, I don't know if I have enough for everybody, but uh, yeah. But anyway, um, please come. Uh, let me know um, if you want to visit. If you have a, a group that you'd like to arrange for a tour, we're doing a lot of tours. Uh, we we were very uh, cautious last year because of still COVID mm -hmm. concerns. We we had a, a scaled back education and and docent and tour program. Uh, we we're really ramping up for the spring. Uh, we just got, um, we're, we're working on a $40,000 grant from the Community Foundation for Education and Public Programs. And then we're also um, building a new uh, exhibition, Sonoma County Stories. It, we're completely renovating the second floor of our historic post office building. Um, and in the summer, this exhibition, which is really a multicultural look at the history and culture of Sonoma County through storytelling with a lead storyteller um, uh, is Gay LeVaron, who has amassed um, dozens and dozens of recorded oral histories. And we are working with Sonoma State University and the Press Democrat and um, local schools and just a whole bunch of community partners. Um, so uh, that, there will be more information coming out about that as we get ready to open to the public. Right. So um, really exciting stuff going on at the museum. Is your ed stuff in the schools or is it um, in the museum and schools come Both. Both. Um, so our art, art for Kids program, um, it's basically uh, a teaching artist will do a, a tour and hands-on program in the museum uh -huh. and then go to the classroom for three consecutive um, visits to do additional um, hands-on art activities. That's all grant funded. Oh yeah, and we opened a new community um, community space at the back of our art gallery. So it is, um, it's got room, we've got some wall space for community, small community art exhibits. So if anybody knows of a community group or a school that would like to, to uh, have an opportunity to uh, show their work in the museum. Um, just you know, shoot me an email, let me know, and I'll put, uh, put them in touch with our um, exhibition manager. We, um, our first uh, exhibit of uh, student work will be a photo show from um, uh, uh, Santa Rosa Junior College that's coming up uh, in just a couple of months. Excellent. Really quick, you're talking about the Michael Cooper in, is that in the modern art? And then, so what is exhibiting in the um, the old post office? 
Uh, it's right now um, under construction. So, so we're so the second floor, but the first it's uh, we're actually right now it's closed to the public because uh, okay. um, it's a construction zone. I mean, there's scaffolding and got it. Um, okay. We're actually the scaffolding is coming down tomorrow, and then um, we're we're actually doing a preview for. It's actually a hard hat tour because it's a, a construction zone, but <laughs> donors are invited in on Thursday just so they can kind of get a progress report. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think starting next month, we'll start bringing um, sort of a broader uh, community mm -hmm. en engagement program. We're going to open parts of it, but, you know, it's been really dusty and noisy. Mm -hmm. It's kind of terrible working in there right now <laughs> it was really noisy today yeah but uh anyway um so yeah it's it's, it's a capital project really um but um well i think we'll be open i think the history building will, will be open um starting next month just you know limited hours great Anything else? Just keep this in mind and we'll get moving. Okay. Um, we are now moving to number six, which is community member committee member reports. Um, committee members are welcome to make comments. No, sorry. I'm 6.1. 6 6 yes. Ad hoc task force reports and discussions. So we could just maybe, if you have something to share or update, uh, the first one on the list is diversity, equity, inclusion, and access, which is Lisa and myself. Yeah. Yep. And we're active, we're very active. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Since our last um, meeting, yeah. uh, you and I, have, we've met with Miko from Kimson Creative. Um, we've met probably around four times via Zoom, and we have been reviewing the current process of the APPC's request for qualifications and selection considerations. And we are sifting through our current resources and policies um, with our DEIA, diversity, equity, inclusion, and access considerations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nico's great. He's the mm -hmm. driver. Gets you, he's, he's, he gets you somewhere at the end of the mm -hmm. meeting. So it's been really mm -hmm. helpful. We have one next in the next couple of weeks. We're, don't, is everyone else meeting with someone? Professional. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin is meeting with the right. engagement task force yes. and yep. so project management. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we get to meet with Nico. So we're, how about the next one? Um, community engagement. I guess I'm a committee of one now. Yep. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need a partner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Melanie uh, and I uh, met a couple of times with Kevin, um, and then he did uh, also one on one. Um, but also, I think um, actually, I'm. Uh, I'm more excited about um, uh, the engagement we had with helping to put together the um, Unum uh, sculpture dedication. Mm -hmm. uh, so Melanie, Melanie really, um, I, she took the uh, bull by the horns and, and I was really a great organizer for that. But um, I was also happy to get uh, hands-on art activity from the museum to be there and to line up some music and um, I just thought it was a great event. I was really proud to be part of it. And um, so just have to figure out what um, our task force is going to be doing next. And I'd love to be a committee of more than one. <laughs> yeah, we, we would like to offer the opportunity <laughs> yes, to join. Double. So we'll get you caught up. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Great. Um, project development? Uh, we haven't had, uh, Nathan and I have not met as a committee um, recently. Uh, I did have a meeting with Kevin uh, before I went on a vacation. That's why I wasn't at the last meeting or the Unum dedication. Um, but that was a really fruitful conversation having, with, having had with him about kind of perceptions of how projects get initiated and talking through how to um, kind of change some dialogue or how to look forward. So I thought that was a very fruitful conversation with Kevin um, and uh, great to hear all the updates coming from the city side. And uh, I'm interested to kind of dig into some more of what project development means with our, our focus in the next couple months. 
So do you have anything to add? Yeah, I had a nice talk with Kevin too. And it seems like maybe the place to start or my impression was that the place to start is with the audit. Of, and so maybe we can meet with yeah that'd be great next yeah weeks to yeah we're working we actually just met Jessica and I just met with um, Kevin and Nico to get kind of an up status update on how the work with the task forces is going and we set up some things that I think will keep each group moving and, and give more direction so that will be coming up soon yeah thanks right yeah but yeah the, with the audit is important as well. Are there any public comments on this? Anyone zooming in? Anybody okay. there? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, okay. Thanks, everybody. Let's move on to the next item. We are into... Um, Before we move on, I'm going oh, um, to say goodbye to everyone after a run to the Finley Center. So. Bye. Oh, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. See you next time. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks for the stickers. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Now this next time is reserved for the staff, Tara, to provide a briefing on issues of interest. Um, no action will be taken on these matters except to maybe place a certain item or particular one on a future agenda for consideration. So, Tara, do you have any department reports? Yeah, I do have one today. Um, I wanted to share. It's been on our upcoming agenda kind of idea list mm -hmm. is, um, and I wanted to share some some, some uh, updates on what the county is doing related to a fire memorial yeah. project. So um, Creative Sonoma has received approval from the Board of Supervisors to begin the planning of a fire memorial public art project meant to commemorate the lives lost uh, in the 2017 fire complex. Creative Sonoma is currently seeking a project manager to manage the project as well as community members to apply to serve on a project task force. So if any of you uh, are interested in being on the task force or could recommend anyone, um, you can find out more or want to manage the project. <laughs> you can find out more by visiting creativesonoma.org and going to programs, public art, fire memorial, public art project. The direct URL to that site is too long for me to read out. So um, I'm trusting that you can navigate to their main site, go to programs, look for public art, and then look for Fire Memorial Public Art Project. And they have a great site set up that gives you all of those project updates. So that's all I have. The public art program is not involved directly in that, mm -hmm. in that project. It is not a city funded project. Although the county, I think at kind of a political level is seeking support from the city. Um, through potential sites. They do not have a site identified yet, um, but, um, but the public art program is not a funding partner or a, a project kind of partner other than to help as much as we can through our experience managing public art projects and how the one in Coffee Park went, which is kind of the closest that we could say we, we've done related to a project like this. You mentioned that you thought they were interested in people that had been directly impacted by the fires themselves. Or had That's some my sense is for the task force members that they're looking for uh, community members who either lived in an area that was impacted directly, had family members affected directly, or that was somehow involved um, in recovery or res uh, first response kind of efforts. Mm -hmm. Um, but that doesn't, I mean, it, it's an application process, so yeah. anyone can apply. Sure. Um, that's just what I've heard that they're make, they want to make sure those types of people are represented on mm -hmm. the task force. Yeah. So if you are yourself or you know someone, you can. Yeah. yeah. Great. We, those, we did those small grants to, um, right. yeah. for, um, for recovery. Yep. With fire response. And that one that turned out really well was the, uh, that was the, um, why am I lost for words right now? She was doing an interactive art with her audience and people who have, you know, were affected by directly affected by the fire. Mm. And that was from the Berkeley. What? Oh, the yeah, that was kind of a multidisciplinary group. It was um, two artists from the Bay Area that mm. that gathered people. Artists, was that Caroline. Yeah, Carol. Um, oh. Carol. 
cannot remember mm-hmm. her last name. And uh, tr- uh, tr- oh my goodness. But I know yeah, Trina, Trina and Carol, I just can't remember their last yeah. names. <laughs> but yes, they came, they were wonderful to work with. They, yeah. they did events at the library, at the round barn. Right. Um, okay. They, they brought together all sorts of artists from Sonoma County who really had been directly affected and to do um, kind of all sorts of writing workshops, um, movement workshops, music, um, to yeah, reflect on what good. the yeah, way I was, was connected to that. So yeah, that was really that was great. great. I just heard so many positive things yeah, about that and how well that went. Yeah. yeah, the museum was a partner. Was, oh, wonderful. Yeah, I'm, I'll reach out to Kristen because, um, like, you know, we did the From the Fire exhibition yeah. and we have the uh, the firewall is still active on our, our website. People mm-hmm. are still uploading images and poetry yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. So when you're talking about Kristen, you're talking about from Creative Sonoma? Yeah, yeah Kristen yeah. Madsen. Kristen Madsen, yeah. yeah. Right. Not to be confused with other Kristens. <laughs> Kristen Nelson at the Community Foundation. Yeah. Thank you, Tara. Um, number eight, future agenda items. This time is reserved for discussion about whether to place matters on a future agenda. Um, it's an ongoing list. We include, do um, want to add any items or make a motion to include one on a future agenda? We, we do have an ongoing list that um, includes private partnerships, commercial real estate and local artists, or how APPC can support community programs and events. We have fire commemoration memorial, budget for visiting artists and a lecture program, heritage walk. Is there anything anyone would like to add? Yeah, I don't, but I have a question, and mm-hmm. if that's okay. Oh yeah. I'm just curious if, if um, it seems like the con- the contract sort of structure with Kim's and Creative has been really productive, and I'm wondering if that's sort of a novel development, and if it's something that um, you're thinking about sort of continuing to to maintain after that contract. Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much we can't go into super detailed conversation on this because it doesn't really fall under. Yeah. The, mm-hmm any item on the agenda, but I mean, I can say briefly that we, we can use professional services agreements for um, project managers, for contractors, for consultants to help in a variety of ways for approved projects that the program is working on. Um, they've been, I think, a great find that they're an arts and equity mm-hmm. consulting firm mm-hmm. um, and know this area and know artists in this area. So um, I, I definitely would I think their work has been great. I would love to continue working with them um, if, if we are able to do so. So I think we can chat more about that on a future agenda. If we, uh, There will be a time where we'll be um, looking forward to our annual plan again, mm-hmm. even though we just did that <laughs> relatively <laughs> recently. And at that time, I think we can have a more robust conversation about use of funds for expanded contracted services. Thanks. Tara, I'm looking at um, the Heritage Walk um, agenda item, which mm-hmm. I suggested a, a while back. Um, we haven't had a conversation with Flora Lee, but would that fall under that or would we want to expand what that agenda item concept might be? Yeah, I think perhaps after we meet with Flora Lee, mm-hmm. we, maybe that could be um, put on the agenda as an informational item. I don't think there's any action necessarily until... Well, at some point there may be for the APPC to be formally involved, but um, but that's when, when I would say the time would be right to do that. Yeah. We're just referring to somebody we know mutually who um, suggested an, a concept very similar to what um, has been kind of discussed from the museum and a few community members about creating some kind of uh, path or walk or guided trail through downtown connecting various points historically culturally um so i think we're going to have more yeah, of a conversation about that and, week. Yeah. yeah okay yeah i think i think they have to respond to an email yeah i think we're looking at the 16th <laughs> okay but that's the latest that i saw oh i don't think i can do it on this I'm, Darn it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you can follow up on that. <laughs> I'm, I'm jurying the, uh, the Sonoma State student exhibition this year, and I think that's the date we're jurying the show. 
That'll be fun. <laughs> Any other um, items for the future agendas, or we will move to adjourn. Okay. All right. The next regular meeting of this committee, Art and Public Places, is scheduled for Monday, April 3rd, 2023. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Thank you. It's adjourned. Yay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.